Before we start today's investigation, a reminder that the Templin Institute Commissary has been updated with a bunch of new products, including Doubt Humanity, Honor Apathy, Do Not Question Authority, No Independent Thought, No Ideas, Surrender and Cooperate, Marry and Reproduce, Buy and Consume. You'll find the links in the description below. It is human nature to want to believe that each of us is in control of our own lives. That even though we are subjected to external pressures every day, we are intelligent enough to recognize their influence and make our own choices. We like to think that our free will is paramount. But in 1988 came the shocking evidence that the most sinister influences on human civilization had been kept a secret and that our lives had been carefully managed and controlled by others, the Fascinators. Their origins, history, and even what they call themselves is unknown, but their activities on Earth have left little doubt to their motives. The Fascinators sought to conquer humanity not through military force or any direct action, but rather by acquiring political, economic, and cultural power. They infiltrated the ranks of the worldwide elite, becoming respected politicians, heads of industry, corporate figures, celebrities, media personalities, and anyone else who possessed disproportionate wealth and power within human society. Having seamlessly and overwhelmingly infiltrated the ranks of the upper class, the Fascinators implemented a systemic method of indoctrination meant to keep themselves in power and prevent any mass action against them. The lower classes and humanity as a whole was encouraged to be selfish, apathetic, unimaginative, and submissive. Consumerism was developed into a kind of religion, one that imposed a strict and inflexible model for human lives. Work eight hours. Play eight hours. Sleep eight hours. Marry and reproduce. Any impulses to the contrary were redirected. To keep humanity within this artificially induced state of consciousness, the Fascinators transmitted signals from media stations across the world, with a central hub present in Los Angeles. These signals had the added benefit of concealing their true, grotesque appearance, and made the Fascinators indistinguishable from regular humans. The true nature of advertisements and their subliminal messages were likewise concealed in the same manner. Yet, mankind was not entirely ignorant of their presence. Rather than replace entirely the upper social tier of human civilization, the Fascinators, in many cases, worked directly with its members. In exchange for the resources needed for the expansion of their operations across the Earth, human collaborators had their per capita income increased significantly. Humans aware of the Fascinators' presence were given an opportunity to live a life of luxury and privilege on the condition they work against the interest of their own species. Promotions, bank accounts, new houses, cars, all were used to buy silence and loyalty. The long-term goals of the Fascinators were largely straightforward. Like those they had aligned to their cause, they would live extravagantly while manipulating humanity into making the Earth more pleasant to them. Global warming was subtly intensified, and atmospheric conditions made more amenable to their biology. At the same time, they worked to discredit global warming as nothing more than an overhyped natural phenomena. Once the process was complete, the Earth's resources would be depleted, and the Fascinators would move on to another world. The few humans who both were aware of the Fascinators and either rejected or were not offered higher social status by them instead attempted to form an organized resistance. Through the Fascinators' control of worldwide military and police institutions, however, this resistance was largely unsuccessful. Yet, the destruction of the alien signal network and the exposure of their hidden presence on Earth would ultimately be achieved by a single man. A drifter who stumbled upon a pair of sunglasses that presented the world as it truly was. His simple declaration to the Fascinators would spell the end of their plans. He had come to kick ass and chew bubblegum, and he was all out 
of bubblegum. The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards. 